the moon arc is literally uh, as if Noah's Ark for us and uh, all of us involved and an enormous team of people and 250 artists and people from all over the world are involved and uh, it's this idea that we are sending uh, an arc of life a certain view of a very positive view of life on earth uh, to the moon as a uh, gesture of gift to the moon uh, where there is this lifelessness so here's you moon who produces all this life and we want you to know in return you know all the life that you generate and um, and that's the whole biggest part of what we're trying to do with all the artists and all the arts from Carnegie Mellon and from the world in general. It's about time. It's about creating something, creating an object that is built to scales way longer than human sense of time. So we judge things based on our lifetime, 50 to 100 years. Maybe we have a comprehension of 500 to 1,000, maybe a few thousand years. But the moon arc is designed to last hundreds of thousands of years. And that increases our ability to, to communicate forward. It challenges us with the materials and the processes that we use today to try to create something that can endure. And it puts us in a more reflective state to think about really carefully what sort of stuff we put into the moon arc and what is it that we do want to preserve and communicate forward. We have uh, a lot of selections that we've made, but still it's about these very fundamental positive capacities of human beings to be able to commune and to communicate and to cooperate. So species that can cooperate and communicate are going to win. And if we cooperate and communicate better, <laughs> we have a better chance of surviving. And boy, do we need to do that. <laughs> in this world right now. Better communication, better cooperation would be a good thing to have. It makes me question the idea of what um, a maker could and should be. And um, in relation to the moon, um, you know, maybe the, maybe the most influential part of the project had to do with the technological constraints that we dealt with and how that influenced me as a maker. The idea that constraints can be wonderful and beautiful and they can um, create, I think, outcomes that are, um, that could possibly be uh, much, much, much um, more amazing than uh, what they would have been had the constraints not been in place. So when I think about this project's beginning and all the raw ideas and thoughts that we were um, working with and assembling um, as we tried to develop this as a physical object, as physical pieces, I had no, looking back on it, we, we had absolutely no idea what it would become. We tried not to enter any situation with too many preconceived notions, um, an idea that we had had to, to try to um, make that come to life. We let the project sort of grow, well, we tried to let the project grow and develop organically to, um, to allow it to become what it, what, what it was meant to become.
there is the poetics on how it got where it got and all the things that had to happen, all the things that had to go right in order for that to happen. Um, the right people had to think of the ideas, then the manufacturing had to happen, and then the testing had to happen, and then it, it getting on a rocket that had been designed um, by a whole other large group of people that um, then existed on a lander that had to be designed by a, a whole other group of people. So there's just so many levels of touch points to this one thing, this one experience, this one thing. The lander landing on the moon and having this is a house, you know, the moon arc being housed in the lander that lands on the moon and all the things that had to go right for that to ha actually happen. <laughs>